Suppose that there was a math contest in which 21 boys and 21 girls competed. Once the results of the math contest were collected, two facts were clear. The first fact is that each person solved at most six problems. The second fact is that given any boy and any girl, there exists at least one problem that both of them solved. What we would like to show is there exists at least one problem which was solved by three boys and by three girls. I'm going to draw a chart that will help us. This chart. I have 21 rows, each row representing a boy, and 21 columns, each column representing a girl. If we pick one row, let's say the 21st row, and one column, let's say the second column, then we know there is one square where they intersect. We also know that there is at least one problem that both the 21st boy and the second girl solved. So let's take that problem and let's put it into that box. Also, given a square, we will put a B in the square if at least three boys solved the problem that the square corresponds to. We will put a G in the square if at least three girls solved the problem that the square corresponds to. Of course, it's possible to have a square with both a B and a G, or neither a B nor a G. Now we're going to make an assumption in order to do a proof by contradiction. What we will assume is that there is no square that has both a b and a g. Now I'm going to take a row, just pick some boy, and I'm going to write out his row. Now, what I would like to find out is how many of the squares in his row have to have a g in them which is equivalent to saying how many squares in his row have at least three girls who solved the problem that we put into that square. In order to answer this question, we can equivalently answer the question, at most, how many squares in this row have at most two girls who solved the problem that we put in that square? to each of these squares a letter uh, corresponding to the problem that this boy solved and the girl in that column also solved. Now I want you to get, um, in order to answer the second question, um, which is related to the first question, um, in order to answer the second question, I want to have as few repeats as possible, so that way I can maximize the number of problems that were solved by most two girls. So, in order to get as few repeats as possible, I want to write down um, different letters. And so, since this boy solved at most six different problems, I can only use six different letters, and I'll write them all in. A, B, C, D, E, F. Now, he solved at most six problems, so these are all the letters that I can use. And now, in order to fill in the rest of these squares, I'm going to have to start repeating letters. Now, each of these problems was only solved by um, one girl so far. And I'm only going to write them down again once in order to try to um, maximize the number of problems that no more than two girls solved. Okay, so now we made it to 12 and we used each of the letters twice so far. And that was as efficient as we could be at using each letter twice. And so, so far, we have no letters, meaning no problems, that were solved by um, more than two girls. But now, I have to get from 13 to 21, 
And so I'm going to have to use one of these letters another time. And then that letter will become a letter that was solved by three girls. And if I use two more letters, then there will be two problems that were solved by three, three or more girls. Three letters, there will be three or more problems that were solved by three or more girls. But since I'm trying to minimize the number of squares that were solved by three or more girls, I might as well just use one letter and just use it to fill in the entire rest of this. So that way, um, I only lose one letter. And so let's just pick the letter A and just fill in the rest of it with that letter. Now it's clear that we are able to use the problems B through F only twice, but problem A we had to use at least three times. The answer to the question of at most how many squares contain a problem that was solved by at most two girls, well, there were five problems that were solved by at most two girls, and each of those five problems I used twice, so that equals 10 squares. You can just count it up if you want to. B, C, D, E, F, that's five, and then B, C, D, E, F, that's another five. So 10 total. Ten. And that means that since there were 21 squares total, the number of squares that have to have a G in them has to be um, at least 11, which is 21 minus 10. If we repeat this process for every row, we see that in every row, at least 11 squares need to have a G. We see that in every column, there need to be at least 11 squares with a B in them. Now, since there are 21 rows and 21 columns, we see that there have to be at least 21 times 11, or 231 squares with a G, and at least 231 squares with a B. Our chart only has 21 rows and 21 columns, and that means that it only has 441 different squares. Remember that we assumed that there is no square with both a B and a G. If 231 squares have a B and 231 squares have a G, then that means that there must be at least 231 plus 231 different squares. 231 plus 231 is 462. That means that our chart has to have at least 462 different squares. But we just calculated that our chart only has 441 squares. So we've reached a contradiction. Because we reached a contradiction, we conclude that our assumption was false. Thus, there is a square that has both a B and a G, which means that there is, if we take the problem that within that square, it means that that problem was solved by at least three boys and three girls.